spinning. The essentiality of manufacturing in Australia, and that's a real word, anybody wants to debate it, we'll talk later. The essentiality, you'll at least remember. Alice once said, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run twice as fast to get there. Considering the current state of our economy, I hope everybody heard Alice then. <laughs> uh, considering the state of our economy, there's a lot of running ahead of us. About a year ago, at the time of the announcement of the demise of the auto industry, Quickly followed by the shrinking of the mining industry, Janet Forbes asked me to answer her question. What can we do? Can you give us something positive? Everybody is down and gloomy. Especially in the face of the fact that our governments are walking even more slowly than Alice, of which there is no doubt in my mind, um, and recognise where we're starting from, I first want to that tonight to introduce a historical perspective, talk about the history, define productivity, discuss labour and capital, and they go together, emphasise leadership, and then provide the answer, my answer anyway, to Janet's question, all under the umbrella of the essentiality of manufacturing in the 21st century. We as a nation have only recently made a choice between principles of alchemy and metallurgy. Alchemy did not die in the Middle Ages. Australia abounds with recent attempts to transmute metals into gold. The notion of alchemy lets us believe that an easy situation is just around the corner. Alchemists raise protection. You love this story, Dick. Uh, rely on the mineral sector to come good, call for more public funding, blame the unions, she'll be right. We live a life of luxury in these last 50 years. The alchemists say, who needs capital investment, research and development, professional industrial relations and entrepreneurship? On the other hand, a metallurgical pr approach promises no easy solutions. It demands separating out the dross of outworn tradition and searching for the opportunities to compound durable, productive alloys from people, capital and technology. Hard graft is needed to enhance performance in all skills and sectors of our society. But our country still has that lingering lust for that paper entrepreneur, that financial alchemist that gets all the headlines and all the, all the recognition. But it's the creation of sophisticated goods that will get us there. And that's manufacturing. Let's look back at our history and the sequence of events that have brought us to this powerless state where we are we find ourselves today, and palace is the right word. A healthy society, I'm going to talk more about people than most things, so this is not a, a technical talk at all. A healthy society is based on the need for mankind to work producti productively, in harmony with capital, working in harmony with capital, thereby gaining satisfa satisfaction, dignity, and <coughs> self-fulfillment. And that's what we are all about. Manufacturing industry provides the wherewithal to satisfy these needs as an essential part of the fabric of a cohesive society. Manufacturing industry is not in itself as it has been interpreted in the last few years. It is not in itself the auto industry and vice versa. <coughs> However, the government local content program within the auto industry created the Australian manufacturing industry for the 20th century. In the mid-1960s, 
Australia took a serious and telling strategic step for our future. The key word is strategy, a word that's never mentioned in government. Our federal government doesn't even know how to say it. Maybe spell it, I'm not sure. What do you think? <laughs> it really annoys me intensely that in this field in which I'm passionate, nothing is said. They're all thinking like lawyers and journalists. It would be interesting to read the government's strategic paper of the time of the 1960s uh, when the auto industry plan began in the, the mid-60s, really. I guess it would deal predominantly with the need for the provision of jobs for a country in the midst of a major immigration-based population growth. And that's very honourable and good. Don't forget, that was 50 or 60 years ago, and we still had a white Australia policy. We were much less sophisticated in our society. We just moved out of bags, wheat bags, into bulk handling. And if you stop for a minute and think of the impact that bulk handling had at the infrastructure of this country, it's quite significant how we've changed. Change is the word, and we did then. The auto, auto industry was a great selection to be the breeding ground for our economic and social future. It would move the country from a primary industry bias to the manufacture of different and complex goods at the same time providing employment, job satisfaction and wealth for all sectors of society. Manufacturing permitted, allowed, workers with limited capital, some had none, to fulfill their dreams. And in fact, it fulfilled my dreams. Annie and Weber's too. The fathers of choice to enable and facilitate this excitement were foreign investors bringing access to both capital and technology, such as Holden, Chrysler, and Nissan and Toyota in the latter years. The automobile incorporates the most technologies that a single product can have, and so it encapsulates, it encapsulates the, the ambitions of people in many fields of technology and science. And they had a product that was in high demand in the uh, 60s through to the 90s. In retrospect, protectionism was right for the country at the time. Today, it's politically and economically unacceptable. As we gradually became citizens of the world, the dynamic automotive policy moved with the economic needs as the years went by. And I was fortunate, as I said, to have intimately participated in this dynamic strategy. Progressively, the car assembled outsourced components and complex assemblies to enthusiastic small entrepreneurs. And so the 20th, 20th century manufacturing industry under the tutelage of the technology owners was born. Technical licenses were form, formed and in some cases export contracts developed. Real manufacturing, that is by these smaller businesses, reached a degree of maturity. Some suppliers with vision progressed and diversified to minimise future risk. But some stagnated and ultimately reverted to the alchemy philosophy.